nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 91 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. And we are in the process of unneglecting our gem. So we've been uh, working a few recent videos, added support for Ruby 3.2. I, um, and then removed a, a hard-coded link from the readme. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at adding, setting up a security policy for the gem. So um, I will open the issue and talk through this some. So this is the idea of, um, we can see an example here. Uh, the security policy kind of tells you what where to send stuff to if you've got uh, sensitive vulnerability that you discover with regard to the project and also um, provides information about what versions of uh, the project are supported and which ones aren't uh, potentially allowing for um, information about what uh, when things might get um, sunset or s stop receiving support uh, as well you can put um, like say deprecate an old version of something and say uh, as of one year from now or whatever that we're not going to support that any longer. The So this is an example of that. Um, and also, you typically will provide a uh, an email address for where um, suspected security vulnerabilities can be uh, sent uh, rather than opening an issue because if it's an issue, uh, it's it's public and everything's open source so you kind of want any sort of discovered uh, vulnerability to be uh, sent in a more confidential rather than public way the one of the ways you can go about doing this um, is if you see on the github tab here you click on the security tab uh, security policy disabled and if you click on set up a security policy, it will kind of walk you through it. So you can hit start setup here and it gives you the ability to edit that new file. This is just the GitHub uh, markdown editor. So you can see those things there. Um, and what I'm gonna do now, so si similar to what you see in a um, in this it'll probably be a combination of those things I'll, I'll note the uh, information about what gems we're supporting and when um, and then I'll also um, kind of this is similar to other things where you just use the github markdown editor you make a preview and you work and do it so I'm not going to record me typing this out. I'm going to go in and uh, kind of write this. Um, if anything noteworthy comes along while I'm writing it, I'll unpause and demonstrate it or otherwise I'll, after I'm done writing it, I'll pause it and or I'll unpause it and talk through what I did and why. So I'll pause and see you in a couple seconds. All right, so we've got our security policy written here. I added a third column for the end of life of um, older versions. So uh, if you look at the preview here, we've got that. Uh, I'm right now notionally setting a year from now as the date of end of life if I don't wind up generating and releasing the uh, patch on February 14th, then I'll kick that out when I make the um, the change for those certificates. Noted the uh, certificate signing and checksums as a separate section. Um, once I get back to dutifully um, replacing and keeping those certificates up to date, um, the, the gem will be able to be installed with high security. And, um, and then each of the uh, versions has a SHA-256 and SHA-512 um, of the um, released version of the gem kept in the checksum directory of our repository. So 
as you can see it here in the checksums here. So now the the way that they do it in this security uh, policy item here is to uh, they want you to just do the thing and do the commit right in GitHub. I'll stick with the um, process of taking the content of this. We'll copy it and then in the top level the top level we'll create a security dot markdown paste that in there save it and then from our directory we will spell policy correctly git add security git commit sign it write my message all right I've got my commit message here what I'll do now is in this editor I will cancel my changes and then we will push to the branch after I close my editor Push. We've got our item here. We will open up the pull request. Sign it myself. We will pause and let all this building finish. All right, all of our checks have passed and we can now go into, back into the master branch. Push, you can see this will automatically merge the pull request, delete the remote branch, and we should now in our security section, you can see now the security policy is set to enabled. And if we go to security policy, it links to our security policy there. So we can now go in to our issue resolved by number 40. Into our backlog. I think this is the legacy backlog which doesn't automatically update, so we'll move that to done and we'll see you in the next video. Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.